yesterday we got some huge news for Franco Nevada shareholders that the market totally ignored. So this is going to affect, if this happens, this is going to affect Franco Nevada, this is going to affect uh, First Quantum, and this is going to affect Barrick Gold. So the stock price of First Quantum was way up on this news. The stock price of Barrick Gold dropped a decent amount, and the price of Franco Nevada is basically flat since then. So Franco Nevada has been unaffected by this news, but this could be huge for the shareholders of Franco Nevada. So what is this? Well, Franco Nevada's single biggest asset is the Cobre Panama copper mine, their gold stream on the Cobre Panama copper mine that recently got shut down. And Barrick Gold is very interested in owning huge copper gold projects around the world. So it's no surprise that Mark Bristow, the CEO of Barrick, is considering buying First Quantum. Because, so when first, when that Cobra Panama mine got shut down, after that, First Quantum is basically insolvent because they have a ton of debt and their big cash cow now suddenly disappeared. So they they need someone to take over them or or find some big solution and Barrick Gold buying them would be a perfect solution. Now, I'm going to read this article and after that I'm going to tell you why it's so important that Barrick takes over First Quantum and is the one negotiating for the reopening of that mine because they're going to do such a better job than First Quantum for the reasons that I'm going to give you after we look at this article, but let's take a look at this. So, Barrick Gold has spoken with some of First Quantum Minerals major investors to gauge their support for a potential takeover. After the sudden closure of its flagship mine left the Canadian copper producer reeling and wiped out more than, its, more than half of its market value, Barrick CEO Mark Bristow approached some of First Quantum's largest investors late last year, according to people familiar with the situation, who asked not to be identified as the talks were private. It wasn't immediately clear if Barrick has made a fresh approach to First Quantum, and there's no guarantee that it will make a formal offer. However, it makes perfect sense that Barrick would buy First Quantum, given, given their history of turning around mines that have been shut down. Gold giant Barrick has been seeking to expand in copper, and a deal with First Quantum would transform the company into one of the world's biggest producers, because that first, that first quantum mine, Cobra Panama mine, is one of the biggest copper mines in the world. The smaller Canadian miner has been left vulnerable after Panama ordered the closure of his biggest and most profitable asset, creating a potential opportunity for Bristow, an industry veteran with a history of building and running mines in challenging locations. But not only that, not just building and running mines, but also getting mines reopened that have been shut down by the government. Bristow has been closely monitoring the situation since First Quantum's problems escalated in October, one of the people said. The CEO said he is confident that Barrick could resolve the situation in Panama as well as run First Quantum's African mines, the people said. Yeah. And I, I totally agree, based on his history that I'm going to tell you about. And keep in mind that uh, Franco Nevada's share price is, is down like 30% because of the closure of that mine. First Quantum's biggest shareholder is the Capital Group with 22%, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Uh, China's, don't know how to say this, copper company owns 18% and is among those who have been approached by Barrick, the people said. Spokespeople for Barrick didn't respond to requests for comment. First Quantum declined to comment, while this Chinese copper company didn't immediately respond to a request for comment outside of regular office hours. First Quantum has long been on the radar as a potential target for the world's biggest miners, in large part because of the company's Cobra Panama mine is one of the newest and biggest copper operations. The industry's key players are all seeking to expand production of the metal that is essential to decarbonizing the global economy. And Mark Bristow has made it very clear that he wants to acquire big copper projects. And the Cobra Panama mine is 
or well was producing 2% of the world's copper supply and it was set to double its production. It was set to expand its production by 100% in the coming years. So that would make it 4% of the world's copper supply. Yet the Panama project has also proved to be the company's biggest vulnerability. Cobre Panama became the focus of widespread protests after the government approved a new multi-decade operating contract and the company was forced to stop production because it couldn't acquire or couldn't access supplies. Panama Supreme Court subsequently ruled that the law governing the operating license was invalid, prompting the president to order that the mine be closed. First Quantum share price collapsed as a result of the turmoil, shedding more than 60% of its value last year. The company is currently worth about $6 billion, while Barrick is worth about $31 billion. Yeah, uh, First Quantum has a lot of debt, lots of expenses, and they're not going to be able to survive this uh, if they don't get some big deal done. Bristow has been looking to transform Barrick, formerly the world's biggest gold miner, into a major copper producer. Well, he's looking to transform it into a major copper gold producer because a lot of the biggest gold mines in the world are actually copper mines, where it's a copper gold porphyry system. They're gigantic systems, uh, so you mine both the copper and gold at the same time. The company is building a big mine copper mine in Pakistan and previously made an informal takeover approach to First Quantum that was rebuffed. Bristow has made a name building mines in some of the world's most challenging places. At Rangold Resources, he built projects in Mali, Ivory Coast, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, successfully navigating social and political unrest. When Barrick bought Rangold, uh, Bristow was appointed CEO of the combined company. An offer from Barrick would pile more pressure on First Quantum's management as the company struggles to find a solution to the sudden closure of its biggest profit generator. The situation has raised questions about the company's balance sheet, with billions of dollars in debt maturing in the coming years, and First Quantum has said it will release a plan in the new year outlining how it intends to manage without the mine. Okay, so now let's talk about why this is so important to Franco Nevada that Barrick takes over First Quantum. So Mark Bristow is arguably the best CEO in the industry. So for starters, he created Rangold from nothing. And he built up Rangold to be a major gold producer and one of the few very one of the very few gold companies that did well in those deep bear markets. Now after he built up Rangold, he successfully negotiated a no premium merger between Barrick and Rangold, where he became the new CEO of the combined Barrick. You know how hard it is to do that, to convince the management of their other company to let you run their company? Like these people want to continue getting paid their salaries and <laughs> Uh, so that's why you typically don't see no premium mergers happen because the management wants to continue getting their salaries and they often don't have the shareholders best interest in mind and they have their own best interest in mind. But, uh, but Mark Bristow made that happen. Now, after he made that happen, he also negotiated the combination of Barrick's assets and Newmont's assets in Nevada and created Nevada gold mines. And guess what? He negotiated it so he would be the operator of it. And that is something that the previous owners hadn't been able to do in decades. Mark Bristow made it happen in like a year or two. And then he had a mine in Tanzania that got shut down. He was able to rene renegotiate with the government and get the community support to get that mine reopened in Tanzania. And then they had a big mine, the Portura mine in Papua New Guinea get shut down. Well, this one, these negotiations took like three years, but guess what? He did it again. He got that mine reopened. Now, based on his track record, do I think he'd be able to do the same thing in Panama? 
absolutely. And if he can get, if he can take over first quantum, I think the odds of that Cobra Panama mine getting reopened sooner skyrocket, which would be huge for the Franco Nevada shareholders. So that's, that's the huge news that the market totally ignored when it comes to Franco Nevada. They didn't ignore it when it comes to first quantum, the first quantum share price is way up, but Franco Nevada share price is flat since this news. But anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my other videos that's going to help you become a better mining stock investor. I'm releasing new videos on mining stocks and gold and silver and metals and commodities almost every single day. So I'll see you over on one of those other videos.